Morning. That sounds weird. I'm Chappie. I'm not Arnie. <laughs> Chaps Fantasy Chat. Coming to you in the AM. Um, I, this is fun. You know, as, uh, as Lenny said, I, this, today's my birthday. I took the day off. Um, yes, I'm still working. Proudly working. Um, and, you know, thought I'd blow off a little steam and talk some catchers. And talk some draft strategy. I also want to talk about some late round values, some guys that I think are getting over, just like Lenny did gut feelings. I want to talk about some guys that I think are going too late. So again, there's some real valuable stuff. I mean, you know, it's funny, just for some perspective. So, so first off, this is different to me, right? The whiskey that I drink on Tuesdays is, is coffee. <laughs> the wife made me salmon rolls. <laughs> Um, but because the way things happen, we can pause here and talk about draft strategy, which is what I love, right? Because this is chess. We're all sitting here. I like this player. I like this player. I like this player. I like this player. Well, why? Why do you value one player over the other? And this is a really good Opportunity for us to sit down and talk about how to approach a draft. And as I look at it, you guys that listen to me at night um, know how I approach it. I, I, I try and I look at last year's stats because those are real figures and I break them down into categories. So your elite category, your not elite, but really good category. And then everyone else, right? And I call it green, yellow, red. Um, the green is 30-plus homers, 20-plus um, stolen bases, 100 runs, 100 RBIs, and 200, a 280 batting average, right? So, so not that that really matters. I put the yellow, you know, 15 to 30, 10 to 19, 75 to 99, 80 to 100. But I, I, I want to I, I, I set this up because when we talk about holistically – drafting, um, it's clear when you make these lists, if you really think about strategy, (laughs) strategy, strategy, you can sit down and identify some opportunities. What am I talking about? I'll get to the point. The middle infield, the outfield, and pitching are really deep extremely deep. But that's also where the elite talent is. So my thought process is that's where you focus early. You you set out about 30 players, the best 10 to 12 in the middle and the best 20 in the outfield and the best 20 at pitch or maybe 10 at pitcher and you try and pick off those players early. You make a tiered list of cores that you try and get. And then you filter in after that. What the hell am I talking about? Well, (laughs) I'm going to bring it down to catching today. But I'm going to bring in some values later on and talk about why you want to get this elite talent early on. And then put the brakes on. Right? So we talked about it. We talked about it in, in earlier shows. Uh, the the top 12 corner infielders, the top 12 middle infielders, and the top 24 outfielders are elite, right? So you want to spend your draft capital there. I, see, in the past, I've been of the school of thought of, I want JT Real Muto, I want Osmani Grandel, I want Gary Sanchez. That's all fine and dandy. Those are, those are great players. But my argument today is this, this catching category is sneaky deep. And there's not, it's just like quarterback in football. There's not a huge difference between Yasmani Grandal and Travis Darnett, Carson Kelly. Yes, you're, Reaching a bit on maybe on some of those 
late, you know, second tier catchers because you want to get the guy you want. But that's okay because you've supplanted that third or fourth or fifth round pick that you would have spent on a Gary Sanchez. And you're replacing it with a guy that has the talent of, I don't know, say Kettle Morte. Right? I like Stallings. And I'll talk about him, Andrea. But I I think it's important to drive home the point when you're talking about draft strategy. This is how you have to think about these things. So you punt catching, is my point. And you look for value. You look for guys who have slipped. Because it's so deep. Because eventually, just like at shortstop, I said this at shortstop too, the draft pivots. Yes, people are going to go out and they're going to get Real Muto. They're going to get Grandal. They're going to get Sanchez. They're going to get Contreras. Those are all going to be taken with the fifth or sixth round draft capital. My argument is, my argument is, draft Max Muncy instead. Draft Matt Olson instead. Save your draft for that spot for later on. Because it's deep and you can. Right? So now that we're under that understanding, I did do the tiers. I, I, I want you to know there's not a whole lot of greens in this category you would expect that but I think the ones that we we do have we need to celebrate the greens again if you're just joining me 30 homers 20 stolen bases obviously you're not going to have that a catcher 100 runs 100 RBIs and a 280 batting average that's our elite statistic bar okay only two catchers had green for homers and only two catchers had green for batting average. That's it. That's it, guys. But there's a lot of yellow. As a matter of fact, and this just bolsters my argument, right? There were 13, 13 catchers that had 20 plus stolen bases. Excuse me, 15 plus, sorry, 15 plus home runs. So that yellow tier, 15 to 30 homers. There were 13 catchers in the top 24 that had 15 plus home runs. So what makes one different from the other then, right? It's the other categories. How how, how are we looking at, and particularly, the runs and the RBIs? And here's where you have to take in some potential, right? Because... It really just depends on team makeup, team makeup and where the catcher hits in the batting order. Just like Lenny said before me, Wilson Contreras slotted in to hit fourth for the Cubs is a huge bump, knowing that they're going to score a lot of runs. So it's about a little bit of... With catcher more than any of the other positions, I usually I take these numbers and I try and think big picture about what's going on. So let's talk about it. I'm going to give you my list. First off, it's really tough because I, I think that the top four are pretty pretty much set in stone, and you can order them. So, so according to ADP and how I've ranked them, because I like to try and rank according to value, JT Real Muto has a 52 ADP. He's the only catcher that was yellow in every category. So he had 25 homers. He had 92 runs, 83 RBIs, and a 275 average. All of those were... In that, what you're striving, you want to stay above yellow, right? You want to be above the bar on all your categories. So, again, Real Muto was the only catcher. And you'll see when we go down through this list, the runs and the RBIs are the ones that are hard to get. These catchers don't get that opportunity. And it makes sense, right? Because they're usually hitting at the end of the lineup. That's why when you get a guy, like all three, all four of these guys are, that are hitting the middle of the lineup, that kind of peaks you up a little bit, kind of grabs your attention. Right? So Real Muto, Grandal, Sanchez, and Contreras. That's your first tier. Um, and the latest ADP of those guys is 118. So in a 12 round, 12 round draft, that's about a 10th round pick. All three of these guys, or all four of these guys, um, are in the yellow in, in homers. 
Only Grandal had runs. He had 79 runs last year. Stallings is with Pittsburgh, now, pal. He, he'll be the everyday catcher in Pittsburgh. And again, it's not, it's not because I've seen him uh, qu- quite a few times. Their AAA team is here in Indy. Um, he's, he's a big kid. I mean, he, he looks the parts. It's the opportunity. There, there's, there's no one, there's no one who's really going to push him. And he has the skill set. He has a, he has the skill set to hit you 15 to 20 homers. So I, I, I think he's mediocre behind the plate. He's not a very good defensive catcher, but he's sufficeable. Um, but I, I think he, he hits you about 240. He can hit you 15 to 20 homers. But the opportunity's there. He's going to play. He, he's going to be the catcher in Pittsburgh. He doesn't really have any competition. So back to these top four. I used to be of the skills of, of the mindset that I'm going to target these guys. I want one of these four. I have to have this top tier. I've pivoted off of that now. I don't want one of. Them. I, I, of course, I want one. I, I, you know, you guys know me. I'm a Cubs fan. I, I love Wilson Contreras. I've had him basically since he's come up from the minor leagues. But there's more value behind them. So I don't make this list to look at who's one, two, three, four per se. I look at this list and say, where can I substitute draft value? Right? So we've got these top four guys. They're all clearly elite. But what about these next four guys? I'm going to give you four names that I think I would happily substitute any of these names out for the draft capital you're going to get in return. Mitch Garver, Will Smith, Christian Vasquez, and Omar Narvaez. All four of those guys were yet were 15 plus homers, two, 250 to 280. So they're not killing your batting average. They're still contributing there. And should be hitting A in either really good lineups and or B in a good part of the lineup, right? So they all have appeal and they're all coming at teen value, right? So 116 to 221. Will Smith's 156. Vasquez is 198, so 156, do my, help me do the math, that's around the 15th round pick. I love Roberto Perez. We're going to talk about him a little bit, Andy. <clears throat> but when you start thinking about, would you rather have JT Real Muto or Ewa Jimenez? They're going about the same time. You can't substitute Jimenez later on. I mean, you can. You have to get lucky. But you can substitute Omar Narvaez, who hit 22 homers and 278 last year, playing in Milwaukee. You can substitute Will Smith, Christian Vasquez. These guys are value picks. So if I'm... I like going deeper than this, actually. So, But if I'm going with this rate, where I want to get one of the top... 10 catchers, right? These are the guys I'm looking for because they present value and they allow you to backfill with value in the elite positions. So so these next four guys, again, Garver, Garver had 31. Gardner is the second catcher. Sanchez was the other to hit 30 plus homers. The only two greens in the power category. So I think there's real, um, again, he and Contreras are going about the same place. So really, I could have put him in with that, right? In that top tier. But the <laughs> these guys that you can get in the 12th, 13th, 14th round certainly are a lot more appealing with the type of a player that you're getting um, to replace him earlier on for a Real Muto, a Sanchez, a Grandal. But here's the thing. This is even deeper than that. Because again, I went I went to 25 catchers pretty easily. 
And I'm not going to sit here and bore you, but I do want